Ladies and gentlemen, setting targets has been essential to advancing the NCD movement. The global NCD strategy was first adopted by the World Health Assembly in 2000, yet the Millennium Development Goals adopted in that same year did not reflect that strategy. No NCD targets were included in the MDGs. In the decade that followed, while we saw advances in specific areas of NCDs, the WHO FCTC, the Global Strategy on Diet and Physical Activity, the Global Action Plan on the Harmful Use of Alcohol, we did not see the movement attract high-level political attention. It was not until a concerted movement to solidify the arguments on the mutual links between NCDs, poverty, inequity and the disproportionate burden of NCDs on low and middle income countries that the first UN high level meeting on NCDs was organized in 2011. The series of UN high level meetings that followed created a momentum for the movement on NCDs. They resulted in NCDs being made first-class members in the global development discussion with targets that ranged from the reduction of premature mortality to the reduction of alcohol consumption. Specific discussions on fundings were held and the European region itself saw a growth in the programs on NCD prevention and control with an increase in human and financial resources in both WHO and member states. As the UN high-level meeting of 2025 approaches and beyond it the 2030 deadlines of the SDGs, there is a new political urgency behind our discussion of targets here. I will make three points. First, the challenge of the PERMA crisis. NCDs must again contend with policy inattention or apathy as national leaders have to deal with pandemics present and future, the climate crisis, the war in Ukraine, earthquakes in Turkey and northern Syria, the hollowing out of health systems with the loss of health workforce and the erosion of trust in institutions, in experts and in science. Politicians and policymakers have a lot on their plate. Where does NCD fit in? Second, as time for action grows shorter, the relative importance of different interventions rebalances itself. The importance of direct action on averting deaths, such as reducing deaths from stroke in the East and deaths from cancer in the West of Europe, grow in importance. The actions we recommend to governments must not only be best buys, but they must be quick buys producing benefits in the short term. For example, regional specialist stroke centers may save more lives in the short term than larger scale, more long term investments in other levels of care. The urgency of enforcing controls on alcohol and tobacco use, on salt for example, which have stalled in many countries, all grow in urgency. We need to consider whether the resources we invest in interventions with lower immediate return are worth the time and money we put into them. Third, inequity and action on the social com and commercial determinants of NCDs, as in 2011, must again be drivers in our efforts to shine a spotlight on this leading killer of Europeans. Let us just consider cancer. There are huge gradients in cancer incidence and mortality between the East and West of Europe. There are major socio-economic inequalities in EU countries in cancer mortality by level of education. In Central Asia, girls with childhood cancer are left undiagnosed and therefore untreated four times more frequently than boys. Access to pain relief in cancer is inadequate in the opiophobic countries that make up half of Europe. Here is our challenge. In the next five years, we must see a remobilization of the NCD movement around these three points. We must regain political priority for NCDs in the time of PERMA crisis. We must rebalance our priorities on the twin dimensions of effectiveness but also urgency. We must innovate with more fundamental action on the social, environmental, 
and commercial determinants of NCDs. Thank you.